Hello everyone, my name is Sam, aka Complete Freedom. In this video series, I will be reviewing the commercial ACS for airplane single engine land and breaking down each area of operation task by task. The goal of this series is to provide short videos reviewing each task so that anyone who may be struggling with a particular task can quickly find that video and learn where to look for answers for the task. In today's video, we'll be covering the commercial airplane pre-flight preparation pilot qualification knowledge element K3 medical certificates. It's important to note that medical certificates can only be issued by an aviation medical examiner or an AME. You cannot go to your regular doctor or your primary care physician to get a medical certificate that's allowed by the FAA. If you need to find an AME in your area, simply go to Google and do a search for AME near me and find the closest AME near you and schedule an appointment today. It's important to note that a person can only serve as a required pilot or flight crew member of an aircraft only if that person holds an appropriate medical certificate for the flight being flown and if the medical certificate is in the person's physical possession or readily accessible in the aircraft. I always carry my medical certificate in my wallet and I also have a copy in my logbook and one in my flight bag. FAR 6123 covers the medical certificate requirements and duration. Paragraph A discusses operations that require medical certificate. Subparagraph 1 states that a person must hold a first-class medical certificate when exercising piloting command privileges of an airline transport pilot or ATP certificate, exercising second-in-command privileges of an ATP certificate that requires three or more pilots, or when serving as a required pilot flight crew member under Part 121 if the pilot has reached his or her 60th birthday. First-class medical certificates are valid for 12 calendar months if the person is 39 years of age or younger on the day of the exam and is valid for six calendar months if the person is 40 or older on the day of the exam. Paragraph 2 states that a person must hold a second class medical certificate when exercising second in command privileges of an ATP in part 121 of this chapter or when exercising privileges of a commercial pilot certificate. Note the difference in second in command between the first class and second class medical certificates. You only need a first-class medical certificate when exercising the second-in-command privileges with an ATP operation requiring three or more pilots. You only need a second-class medical certificate when exercising ATP privileges that require one or two pilots. The second-class medical certificate is valid for 12 calendar months regardless of your age. Paragraph 3 explains that you must have a third-class medical certificate when exercising the privileges of a private pilot, recreational pilot, or student pilot certificate when exercising the privileges of a flight instructor certificate and acting as pilot in command as a required flight crew member set forth in FAR 61.113. When taking the practical test in an aircraft for recreational pilot, private pilot, commercial pilot, airline transport pilot, or a flight instructor certificate. When performing the duties as an examiner in an aircraft when administering a practical test or proficiency check, note that you only need a third class medical when taking the practical test for any uh, certificate or rating. You need the first or second class medical certificate only when exercising the privileges of an airline transport pilot or commercial pilot. The third class medical certificate is valid for 60 calendar months between the ages of 16 and 39 and valid for 24 calendar months if you are age 40 or older. Next I will be providing relevant expiration dates for each class of medical certificate. The first class medical certificate is only required when exercising ATP privileges. The first class medical certificate expires after 12 calendar months for a person age 18 to 39. So a person who, with an exam date of February 12th, 2023, will be able to exercise the first class privileges until February 29th, 2024. They will also be able to exercise the second class privileges until February, February 29th, 2024. However, they will be able to exercise third class privileges until February 29th, 2028. The first class medical certificate is valid for six calendar months for a person age 40 or older. So with the same exam date of February 12th, 2023, a person's 40 or older, their first class privileges will expire on August 31st, 2023. However, they can continue to exercise second class privileges until February 29th, 2024, and will be able to exercise third class privileges until February 28, 2025. For a second class medical, it's only required when exercising commercial privileges and expires after 12 calendar months regardless of age. So a person 
who is 18 to 39, with an exam date of February 12, 2023, may exercise second-in-command privileges until February 29th, 2024. However, they'll be able to exercise third-class privileges until February 29th, 2028. And for a person 40 years of age or older, with the exam date of February 12, 2023, they'll be able to exercise second-class privileges until February 29th, 2024, and third-class privileges until February 28th, 2025. The third class medical certificate expires after 60 calendar months for a person between the age of 16 and 39. So if a person has an exam date of February 12, 2023, they'll be able to exercise third class privileges until February 29th, 2028. And for a person 40 years of age or older, they'll be able to exercise third class privileges until February 28th, 2025. If you're finding this video helpful, Click on the like button below and help this video reach others that may find it helpful as well. FAR 6153, Prohibition on Operations Near Medical Deficiency, also known as Temporary Disqualification. In paragraph A, states that operations that require a medical certificate, no person who holds a medical certificate may act as pilot in command or in any other capacity as a required pilot flight crew member while that person knows or has reason to know of any medical condition that would make the person unable to meet the requirements for the medical certificate necessary for the pilot operation, or is taking medication or receiving other treatment for a medical condition that results in the person being unable to meet the requirements for the medical certificate necessary for the pilot operation. AIM 8-1-1 covers fitness for flight for medical certification. In paragraph A2 states that pilots who have a history of certain medical conditions described in these standards are mandatorily disqualified from flying. It lists a few medical conditions including personality disorder, psychosis, alcoholism, and drug dependence. It continues on to say that other medical conditions may be temporarily disqualifying, such as acute infections, anemia, and peptic ulcer. However, it also states that pilots who do not meet medical standards may still be qualified under special issuance provisions or the exemption process. I hope you enjoyed this video, and in the next video we'll be covering Knowledge Element K4, Documents Required to Exercise Commercial Privileges. If you found this information useful, please like the video and leave a comment below. Also, subscribe to the channel and share this video with anyone who may find this content useful. Thank you for watching.